This isn't exactly the sexiest thing on four wheels. That is brilliant. There's a good reason why the K-Series engines are hugely popular in motorsport circles. It kind of bounces around a little bit, almost like it's a bit drunk. Like it's doing this and it's a bit all over the place. Hey, you want to know everything that can go wrong with the second generation Honda CRV? Do you want to see how they're aging, what they're like to live with and drive? Most importantly, do you want to know if you should buy one or not? We're going to answer all of these questions and so many more, but first of all, here's the CRV. CRV in a nutshell. Not literally a nutshell, obviously, that would be ridiculous. Anyway, considered to be one of the founding fathers of medium ish SUVs, the second generation Honda CRV was manufactured in Japan for just five years. And this was during the early noughties, which many consider to be Honda's peak when it comes to build quality and reliability. However, if you're expecting a flawless experience with this, we'll cover what goes wrong soon. Now, Honda upgraded the second gen CRV in 2004, but it was far more than just a visual update. The mechanical changes were pretty substantial. All Aussie delivered CRVs are going to feature the iconic K24 engine, sending power sometimes to all four wheels via either a manual or an automatic gearbox. Why only sometimes? Well, the CRV is ostensibly a front wheel drive car until it senses that the front wheels are slipping and then it sends power to all four wheels. But chances are you'll never detect when that happens. Trim spec wise, before the update, they were available in just two flavors. After the update, three flavors, although there were a handful of special editions, just like this one, thrown in to keep things spicy. Pricing kicks off from as little as $1,000 and tops out at around about $10,000. Yes, there are some people asking more than that, but those sellers are dreaming. However, if you are on the tightest of budgets, it is critical to not get ripped off with the wrong finance package. And the best way to do that is by hitting the driver link down there. Look, I'm not gonna bore you with all of the details now, but driver will find you the very best finance packages to save you money and also, I've personally never encountered an easier or faster way to sort your car finance. Also, if you do all of that via that link, we're gonna give you a free $150 fuel voucher. Now look, I know what you're thinking. I get it, Honda make great cars, but this isn't exactly the sexiest thing on four wheels. And true, it doesn't have the cool retro vibes of the Generation 1 CRV, and it's not as boxy or as funky as the X-Trail of the same age as this. But here's a tip, throw on some cool aftermarket wheels, maybe some all-terrains and some chunkier springs, and it can look like this. However, there is something really important we need to talk about when combining things like exterior with budget SUV, and that's looking for accident damage and dodgy repair work that's been done on the cheap. To help you identify these things and so much more, please make sure you watch our Ultimate Used Car Buyer's Guide, the link's down there. Now, as far as what stuff you're gonna get on the exterior, it really does depend on the year and the trim spec. For example, some of these will have color-coded bumpers, others won't, some will have factory fog lights, others don't. Others will have a hard plastic wheel cover and others also won't. And then this special edition comes with a factory nudge bar and 16 inch alloy wheels and others can have a sunroof. And if you do need all the specific details of which different trim spec gets what sort of stuff, go to redriven.com and check out the awesome and completely free Redriven CRV cheat sheet. That cheat sheet will also detail everything that you get inside. But we are talking about a 20 year old car here, so let's not go expecting too much. Obviously Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you can forget any of that stuff being factory fitted. The good news is this is just a standard double din fascia, so fitting that sort of equipment after, with aftermarket gear, super easy. Oh, just on this as well, the four speaker stereo in here, it sounds like you'd think. But as far as what else you can expect, you're still gonna get all of the usual features like air conditioning, remote central locking, power windows and mirrors, and some of the automatic models can come with cruise control. And depending on the specific CRV, you might get all of this as well. Now elsewhere inside, you want practicality? Oh my God, this thing kills it for practicality. Here we go. First of all, in the center console, you have this enormous chasm of a cubby hole here. You've got cigarette lighter and ashtray, gross, yuck. You've got a spot specifically for emergency boss coffee supplies. You've got a bloody good sized glove box, tiny but long little bookshelf. The door bins are crap, way too shallow there. A little bit of a shelf up here. You've got captain style armrest on the passenger seat. You've got an armrest here that's also height adjustable. Also, this flips open. Now this is amazing. I feel like maybe Honda grabbed an Eclipse Mints box and then built the entire car around this because look how perfectly that fits just there. That is amazing. Then under the armrest, you've got this funky little table with two cup holders, but that can flip away like that. But then also it's got little hooky sections on the front of it. So if you've got a Frank Green water bottle, you can just like 
loop it into there and it doesn't move around anywhere. Brilliant. And then design-wise in here, there are also some really cool features. I love that the gear selector is kind of up here like an old school muscle car. And then this is genius for me. Some people don't like it, but they're wrong. The handbrake is integrated into the design of the center console. So it all just looks like one unit here. That is brilliant. And look, obviously with the age of this vehicle, there are no, or very few, soft touch plastics. But in saying that, I feel like the CRV is all about enjoying lifestyle. So having hard, scratchy plastics, and they are hard, they don't really scratch up. It just suits the car. Also, is it just me, but I love, I know it's an, 2005, 2006 model. I feel like this is very 90s fabric and I just love it. As far as the ergonomic stuff go, look, some people complain about the seat comfort. I don't think these are too bad. It's not the last word in seat comfort, but it, they're fine. And then finally with the upfront area, wear and tear. This thing has over 180,000 Ks on it. Pretty bloody good because all the plastics are hard, they haven't scratched up. The fabric is in great shape. Obviously, every CRV is going to vary from car to car depending on their life. The steering wheel that has started to kind of degrade here and losing some chrome bits here, but overall, pretty good. Now, in the back seat, I'm exactly 20 centimeters taller than early 2000s Honda racing legend Max Biaggi. This is in my driving position, and this is so impressive. Heaps of knee room, so much foot room. There's no transmission tunnel, so there's just copious foot room. Also, these seats, they slide back and forth, and you can change the angle as they recline, like that, like proper recline. Also, because because the glass house is so large in here, you never feel claustrophobic. It's all dark materials, but kids are never going to get scared back here. And the seats are really comfy. I cannot get over how good the back seat is. Then as far as practicality in the back seat, you've got two of the toughest looking map pockets fishing nets I've ever seen. You've got a pull down armrest with a couple of cup holders there. That's about it. But there's so much room for storage. You could put backpacks in here. And then as far as wear and tear in this car, Brilliant, excellent. I don't know how many people have sat back here, but clearly not many. Also in the doors, on this side you've got, they're not, they're not great sized door bins to be honest. On that side it has a, an ashtray, it's disgusting. There's also a second shelf here, that's pretty handy. Actually, you know what, just on that ashtray, I've got a funny feeling, it comes out. Uh, if you're a smoker, you might want to look away now. You know what you should do with this? That. And then when we come to practicality in the boot, there are some really cool tricks here. First of all, that opens up separately. That is so handy in shopping centers, especially because this door, it's a matter of opinion. I, I just wish they all opened that way. Obviously it can't because it's got a spare wheel on it, but the opening is massive. Then once you're in, heaps of space back here, plus the seats, flip up easily like this. So you've got copious amounts of room, but the real highlight is this. You think this is just a floor, don't you? No, it's actually a fold out picnic table. How good is that? Brilliant, Honda. Oh, also another little net here, cubby hole here, and a hook for your groceries. Okay, so what are these like to drive? Tell you what, let's start with the negatives first. First of all, judging the back end can be a bit of a challenge. This particular car is fitted with reverse parking sensors and they are fantastic. I would recommend fitting a reversing camera when you replace the stereo. Now this engine, it might have a brilliant reputation for reliability, but in this, it certainly doesn't prioritize performance. Look, it's not embarrassingly slow at all, but overtaking at speed, yeah, it can require some courage. Also, at this age, especially in this car, you can feel that the struts and the rear springs especially have seen better days, so it kind of bounces around a little bit, almost like it's a bit drunk. Like it's just doing this and it's a bit all over the place. Now, some people have claimed that these feel a bit too truck-like or too full drivey for them as far as driving feel goes. I disagree. I, I personally love how this steers and feels. It actually has a bit of a Suzuki Jimny feel to it, just far, far more refined. Actually, you know what? It feels like the perfect halfway point between the Toyota RAV4 of this age, which 
honestly just feels like a jacked up Corolla. And the Nissan X-Trail of this age, which does feel very much like a little truck. But what happens if the worst were to happen when you're driving? Well, to take you through the safety features, it does feel appropriate that we do this next bit like an early 2000s movie trailer. In a world dominated by SUVs, the CRV stands, well, slightly above the competition when it comes to keeping you alive. Packing two full-size airbags, four on later models, anti-lock brakes, electronic brake force distribution, and front seat belt pretensioners. Plus, the updated models increase the size of brakes for ultimate stopping power. Now, it's critical when you're buying a car in this sort of budget to know what can go wrong with them. So let's start with the exterior. Uh, you know what? Not much goes wrong. Look, there are some really sporadic reports of minor rust issues. It mainly affects cars in cold climates with salt on their roads or if the car's living near the ocean, but not common at all. A handful of some of the really early examples blew through their wiper motors, but chances are they've been fixed by now. Something else you can blow through when it comes to wipers is cash, especially if you're buying OEM ones, but not so with wiper tech. Actually, you know what, just ignoring the sponsorship thing for a sec, we genuinely use WiperTech wiper blades and we have found that everything they claim is completely true. They are easy to order online, they are easy to fit, and they do work great. And that's why we are totally comfortable in supporting WiperTech. Plus, for you guys, if you hit the link down there, you're going to get 15% off and free express shipping. And then elsewhere on the exterior, there's just a bunch of small annoying things. For example, the strut for the rear door is probably on its way out, so on the wrong angle, the door is going to try to crush you to death. Some of the exterior plastics are now getting a bit brittle at this age, so things like this can happen. And also, depending on if the car has been garaged or not, some of the paint, the clear coat can start to fade, exactly like on this car. But good news, all of these things are really easy to fix. Even with this bonnet, a new bonnet in good condition from a Honda Wreckers was quoted at just $150. And then inside what goes wrong? It's a bit like the outside. Honestly, not a whole lot. Obviously, the stereo, if it's standard, is going to be crap by now. Replace that. Also, some of the earlier pre-update models, they had some pretty major air conditioning issues. It was the condenser that was failing. Chances are, but at this age, they've been fixed by now. But before we get into mechanically what goes wrong with these, a massive thank you to all of the Honda CRV owners groups that helped us research this video. You guys are legends. Now, mechanically, what goes wrong with the CRV? I, I can't tell you. I'm sorry, because I'm not a qualified mechanic. The gym is. There's a good reason why the K-series engines are used in multiple engine swaps and hugely popular in motorsport circles because they're bloody reliable. With the right mods, they're capable of making huge horsepower, but that actually wouldn't be possible if they weren't extremely well engineered in the first place, and that's what makes them so reliable. Yeah, if they've been neglected and missed a few services, they can use a bit of oil. In extreme cases, they can have some timing chain issues, and if they've been terribly neglected, they can also have some valve train complications as well. Now, whether they've been serviced well or not, we do fairly frequently see VTEC complications. Now, it's the solenoid there that controls the, the cam timing. Look, you've got the internet, you know what VTEC is, right? Sometimes the solenoid plays up, sometimes the gauze strainer, it blocks up and that can cause an issue too. Fairly easy to diagnose and relatively inexpensive to fix too. They do tend to get a few oil leaks. Now, all engines do, but what we've noticed on these K-series engine is if the PCV valve, that's the positive crankcase ventilation valve, if it's not working properly, it makes the oil leaks on these way worse. And if you're struggling fixing an oil leak on one of these, make sure your PCV is actually working. Often you see these with oxygen sensor problems. Now, sometimes it is just the oxygen sensor, but some have chronic OT, O2 sensor issues. If that is the case, check your purge valve. That can have a huge effect on the way the oxygen sensors work. Also in the engine bay, look, these are at the age now where we're seeing a lot of AC compressor issues, alternator issues, and starter motor issues. All of them relatively easy to fix, but it's mainly an age thing, more of a design thing. The sway bar or the stabilizer bar link pins and debushes in these seem to wear out very frequently. Possibly they're a bit under-engineered, but a CRV with a link pin rattle is really common. Again, not expensive to fix, it's just very common. The other thing that is relatively common and more so on poorly serviced examples is they have a, a, a shudder through the drive line and you feel it through the car when you do a U-turn. 90% of the time that is coming from the rear diff. Now the Honda call it their dual pump system and that's just the viscous coupling that activates the, the rear axle when it's needed. 
Typically, you can just change the oil in that. It's called Honda dual pump oil and nearly always fixes the shuttering problem. Really easy fix. So yeah, if you can find a, a well-serviced one, you're really unlikely to have any issues with it. Even the ones that are poorly serviced, they tend to keep going and going as well. And the good thing is they're extremely common and there's plenty of parts around. So if something should break, usually relatively cheap to fix too. Okay, so after all of that, should you buy one of these? Well, you know what? I did. This is actually my car. I needed a practical, ultra reliable, relatively fuel efficient SUV with decent four wheel drivability that can still soak up everything from Sydney traffic to freeway runs every single week. My budget was $10,000 and this was my pick because it nails all of those requirements and I'm so bloody happy with it. It's a beast of a little truck. Although when I was shopping for this, I was extremely tempted by this as well. But a question for you, if you weren't to buy this or this, what else would you buy? Let us know in the comments. See you next time.